the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, and later you may eat and drink? Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Increase our faith. I've probably said that a thousand times in my life. I sometimes still say that. I say that because I'm surrounded by people of great faith. Some of you in what it is that you do in this church and for others outside of the church. Even though some of you may be a year or so older than I am, you run circles around me. You run circles around me physically and spiritually. And those are the times that I too ask God to increase my faith. The disciples were no different. And yet, when we look at our lesson for today, Jesus said, that's not what we should be doing. It's a difficult thing for us. It was difficult for the disciples. In fact, we might want to ask ourselves the question, why did the disciples say this? What did Jesus ask them to do that was so monumentally impossible for them to do? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> We're going to look it up. We're going to see. What was it that Jesus said to these disciples that had those, those disciples begging for more faith? Well, the beginning of the 17th chapter, just four verses earlier, Jesus said to his disciples, occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to anyone by whom they come. It would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for one of you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. It is then the apostles ask for greater faith. That Jesus says that we are to watch what it is that we say and do so that we do not cause people to stumble. And when we do see people that stumble, when we see people who are sinful, if they seek to repent, we must forgive them. That is what caused the disciples to ask for an increase in faith. I understand that. I truly do because there are a lot of people that I come in contact with that they are really hard sometimes to forgive. They have done things or said things or, well, maybe have done just the opposite. Maybe they have said nothing or done nothing and yet sometimes it hurts so long. And sometimes it is very hard to forgive. And yet God calls us to do just that. Just as there are many people in our lives that we may encounter that are really, really hard to love at times. And yet God says love them anyway. Sometimes we <laughs> grit our teeth and we ask God for that strength of faith. <clears throat> And yet God says the same as he said to these disciples, I have given you all you need. Well, what has God given us? 
Well, God has given us everything. He has given us the love of Jesus Christ. He has shown us in Christ that God loves us even though we don't deserve that love. And not only does God love us when we don't deserve it, but God himself forgives us. Because after all, we are sinners. We are enemies of God. And yet God still loves us and still forgives us, even while we are still sinners. God said, I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't already done. You see, we know this word of God, we know this love of God, and as we experience that love of God, we are then able in our lives to share that experience with others. God says, I have given you everything you need. Sometimes that's hard for us to grasp. A lot of us think that our faith is, well, kind of like a battery. And depending upon the size of the battery that we have, whether it is AAA or a watch size battery, or maybe even a car battery, we all know that a battery, when used, will run out of juice. And sometimes I think that's how we look at our faith. That if we use it all up, if we give it all away, we're going to be empty. I've had people tell me that the reason they come to church is to get recharged. They need to be spiritually recharged. And yet we cannot look at our faith as being the faith of a battery. Rather, we need to look at our faith rather differently. That we need to look at our faith as if we were extension cords... And that our faith comes from an outlet. And that outlet, of course, is God. And that we can plug into that outlet any time during the course of the day that we need to. That we can plug into that outlet. That we be can become receptacles, if you will, of that love that God has for us and for others. That we can plug into the power of the God who created the universe. That we can plug into the power of God who raised the dead. We can plug into the power of God who healed the sick, the lame, the blind. We can do that at any time during the course of our lives. We can do that at any time during the course of this day. That we do not have to ask God to increase our faith. We just have to remember that we have a God who is faithful to us. That we have a God who has given us all that we need. Because he has given us himself. And at any time, we can cry out, Abba, Father. And he hears and he answers. That in that communion with God, that we are able then to go and do as he instructs us to do. And what is it that God instructs us to do? Well, Jesus gave us those lovely commandments. Love God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, with all of your being, and love your neighbor as yourself. Go and love. I will give you everything necessary to do that, but you have to trust in me. And that's where we get jammed up so much, is we lose our focus. Just as when we think that our faith is like a battery and all of that is inside of us and we have to watch what we are doing so we don't expend that energy. Well, the problem is with that is the focus is upon ourselves and not in the one who gives us all things. You see, when we turn all of our focus inward, we forget to look up to the one who is the creator of all things. The one who is love itself. The one who is grace itself. When we no longer focus upon God, then yes, we are limited in all things, and we fall far short. And that is what God is reminding his apostles, and he reminds us today. That is why he gives them that parable about the slave and the master. That our response to God's love and His grace should be a faithful response. 
A response where we say, yes, Father, let us go and do as you have wanted us to do. That our faithful response is only to do the will of God. And that will is to love and to forgive, to be merciful. Not just to the people we like, not just to the people that we think have earned it, but rather as God has done. He gives it to all who are disobedient, all who are sinful, all who are his enemies, all of us. As God loves and forgives us, we do the same. And you see, that is what God entrusts us to do. But he doesn't tell us that when we go and do this, that we're going to get an attaboy, a pat on the back. He doesn't say you're going to get a reward. And I know that Joel Steen must have forgot this passage because he's made an entire career out of telling people that if you're faithful and if you trust in God, if you pray hard enough, if you believe that God's going to reward you, he's going to rain down things upon you in this world. Uh-oh. Must have forgot that passage. God says that you go and do what I ask you to do, and that is my will in the world. You're not going to get rewarded. You're just going to do as I ask you to do. You're going to do it because I have first given you everything. And I continue to give you everything. And hopefully, out of love, you will do what I ask you to do. How many of us, as we were growing up, would do anything for our parents or our grandparents? We did it not because we were going to earn points with them, but because they showered us with love and gave us life itself. And they continued to bless us in all things. Did we not want to make them proud? Didn't we not want to do whatever it is that we saw we could do just because we love them? That is what God hopes for us. That our response to what he has given us would be to then be faithful in our response. To love God. And to love others. To put God first, to put others next, and then ourselves last. Contrary to what this world would teach us, contrary to what our friends would tell us to do, rather God says, focus upon me, and everything else will fall into place. Trust in who I am. Trust that my Son is the one who came into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And to live as my son lived. And in doing that, you are doing my will. And in doing my will, you are living faithful. No promises of a fat bank account there. No promises of good retirement. No promises of a new car, new house, or anything else. In fact, Ten of those eleven people that Jesus spoke to would be martyred. Think about that. But they trusted in the one who sent them. They trusted that if they were faithful, if they were obedient to the will of God, God would see them through, even if it meant imprisonment, even if it meant beatings, even if it meant shipwrecks, even if it meant they would be bitten by poisonous snakes, even if they would be hung upside down on a cross or beheaded or tortured or killed in any other way. They trusted that God would see them through and God would give them everything they needed. And so they went. And so we go. Trusting in that same love Trusting in that same grace. Trusting in that same mercy. We go. And we do. Knowing that God gives us everything we need. Trusting that if we just reconnect. That at any time that we are feeling like we can't go on. Or we cannot do this. That we are never alone. That 
we can attach ourselves to that portal, to the one who is and was and who shall always be, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And if we believe in him, that we know that in his name, all things are possible. And there God sends us out into the world to do just that, the impossible, knowing that if it is his will,